Hey everybody, this is Laddie the Outcast. Welcome back to Let's Play Dark Cloud 2. I'm feeling in a good mood today, since I'm off and everything, and now we're actually getting to the point where the game gets really fun. So, I'll record an extra video today, why not? Alright, so I'm gonna make a shed here. Yes, that's right. Make a shed. And I want to place it... Can I place it over here? I'd like to. Yeah, there we go. That should do our culture point requirement. Yes, that's 30 culture points. Alright, now we need... Let's go up here and move Adel into her new home. Move people in Adel. There has been a change in the future. Maybe something will happen. Alright, this is probably one of the most useful Giorama upgrades. Because you don't get, I don't think you get any items from it since it's like a plot required thing, but the stuff you actually can get out of it is amazing. nice little trick here. Now you'll notice he said he had some monster transforming badges. There's actually a few things you want to pick up here. Uh, first off, you'll need to get the monster transformation badge. You can buy the gold paint, which is what Parn is looking for if you want to spend the Gilda, but we can get some for free later. And the important thing we want to get here is the indestructible coin. I recommend having at least 6,000 Gilda on your person before purchasing these, because you're going to need, uh, you need one to recruit Donnie, but you also want to get four. So you'll need five, so 7,500 Gilda in the bag. All right. Now, I'm going to make uh, good use of those straight away. Uh, ooh, actually, I need to organize my inventory first, if you guys will give me just a second here. All right, I'm not organizing my inventory. All right, so we want to spectrumize these indestructible coins one at a time until we only have one left. Alright, now let's put these four coins to use. Let's go to the smash wrench. Synthesize one of these onto that. Alright, now the smash wrench has indestructible on it, which will reduce the amount of damage the uh, WHP takes whenever you hit something. Which is really useful against uh, particularly tough enemies. And by tough, I mean heavily armored, like those turtles and stuff and machines. Uh, this is really nice, and it also helps save money on our pinnacle powder. So WHP won't be going down nearly as quickly. Bought four of these, that way I have one for each weapon. Alright. And I notice we got a monster transformation badge that unlocks the fourth character slot. This is Monica. Uh, she can transform into monsters, just like Max can board the Ride Pod. Uh, only Monica can wear the badges. However, unlike the Ride Pod, which is technically considered a separate character that is linked to Max, uh, because without Max you can't pilot the Ride Pod, but the Ride Pod can has a separate health bar, uh, the Monster Transformation, you're just using a spell to turn into a monster, so you're still Monica. So any damage you take as a monster, Damage is Monica's health bar, so if you die as a monster, you lose Monica. Uh, monster transforming, transforming into monsters really isn't that useful, because uh, aside from this one time we have to do it to advance the plot, uh, two things can happen. Two things will happen when you use a monster transformation badge. Uh, you can use the monster special attacks only two at any given time. Because uh, there's some monsters, like the Spider Lady, for example, which has three. They'll give you the two offensive attacks, but if the monster can heal, no, can't do that. And then, uh, any monster corresponding to the monster type that you're actually transformed to at the moment, like, for example, if I turned into a Homara, we would be a Flora creature type. All Flora-type enemies would be passive towards us and actually talk with us. They'll sometimes say, 
They'll sometimes give you tips, they'll sometimes say useless crap, and sometimes they'll say something that's mildly amusing. But it's not really worth your time to try and level these up, because even though you can level it up, the rewards you get for it, corresponding to how long it actually takes to get the level for these things, it's not worth it. You'll get some items that'll like help you with synthesis, but by the time you actually get to an area where it's worth doing that, because the ABS gets so high the experience will fill up really quick, Chances are, by that point, your weapons will be more than powerful enough anyway. into the dungeon so you can contact the Himara and get the sun drops from them, but I'll do that in the next episode since I still want to progress with the Giorama here. Alright, next thing on our list is the eatery. We need to get Polly and Sundane, and we need 40 culture points. Now for that, we're going to need another wooden house. I need to make two more wooden houses. So I'm going to need 40 rolling logs. I'm also going to need a cart. So I'm going to need two wind elements. Okay, so what is that? That's 42 rolling logs and two wind elements? Alright, I'll be right back. I gotta go get stuff from Conda. Alright, I'm back. I got the items I need, so let's go ahead and make a cart and two wooden houses. Alright, so I need to place one wooden house rotate it and place it here between these two trees. Alright, now that's going to be Polly's house. Now in order for Polly to move in, uh, she wants to have a cart next to her house, which she will use to vend out her, well, her wares. Which that actually helps out with the culture. I'll put a chimney on there. Now can I make a pot torch? Okay, I'm missing one rolling log. Uh, do I already meet the culture point requirement? I believe so. Yeah, okay. I just need to get Polly in there. Okay. Move people in. Alright, she's in. There's gonna change in the future. Alright, let's go see what's what. Alright, let's see if there's any items around. Even if there's not, I'm gonna show you the shop's inventory, because it could be useful, I guess, if you're like an item collection fanatic. So let's see, are there any items around? Doesn't look like it, not at the moment anyway. Alright, now to get to the eatery. Oh no, there is an item! A garnet, nice, that's a gem, you can use that. Alright. To get to the eater, you just want to climb up this really, really tall ladder. Hello there! Are you eating right? You won't grow big if you don't eat, so be sure to eat well, okay? Alright. Alright, I just want to purchase a tasty water, good on bread. I mean, this is useful if you need to buy fishing bait and stuff, but we can buy that in the present. And you can actually buy roasted chestnuts here if you somehow didn't manage to find one in the forest. Now, this is one of the reasons why roasted chestnuts are useless as food. Notice that each one of those costs 300 gilda per, uh, per chestnut. Roasted chestnuts only heal 40 hit points. Premium chicken will completely restore all of your health, and you can buy one from Ferdinand for 120 gilda each. So, I mean, really, you only need this to get Ferdinand, so don't buy these unless you're just an item collective fanatic. Alright, I'm going to meet you guys back in the present. Alright, there should be, I think, only one or two more conditions that we need to fulfill here. No three. 
Yes, okay, so we need the weapon shop, Elder Jurax branch, and something that we don't know about yet. So let's go ahead and get the weapon shop in. Ooh, actually, no, we need to fix the branch first. Okay, let's go ahead and fix the branch. Which, for that, we need to surround the... And we don't know the actual conditions for it yet, so this is technically a sequence break, but... Alright, so we're going to need to make a wooden gate and a bunch of rough wooden fences. I'd say about 15 or so should do it. So I'm going to need... Let's see, that's 30 for the fences. 34... For a pot torch, I'm gonna need 35. I'll get 36 just to be safe. Alright, I'll be right back. Alrighty, I'm back. Let's go ahead and uh, make the rest of the stuff we need here. Alright, I wanna make a pot torch. Now, uh, let's see, I need to make a wooden gate. About 15 rough wooden fences. Alright, so let's go ahead and put the pot torch outside of Polly's house. Alright. I'm gonna put the gate in front of the Furbit's house. Welcome to Sunday. And now I wanna put the fences down. What's interesting about fences is that you can actually uh, connect them to each other. That way you're not just like having a bunch of gaps in your fences. Yeah, see, you can turn off, you can turn the magnetism off and on with the square button. I really hope I'm right in thinking that you need 15. I know you need somewhere around in there. short a couple. Alright, let's make more. I shouldn't need more than four. Let's see if four will do it. And I bought I bought extra rolling logs just in case. Three. Four. And did that do it? Oh, dang. That made a whole bunch of things skyrocket. I did not mean to do that. Um... Okay, well, looks like we're fulfilling two things at once. Not normally how I'd like to go about it, but I think we've already gotten pretty much everything we can from this chapter at this point. So, I don't think I can let it slide this time. There's been a change in the future, but we will see what that change in the future is next time. I'm Lad of the Outcast, and I'll see you guys later.